We're asking everyone this, this question on the series. You know, many companies have done away with their annual man, uh, performance management cycle over the last few years, but we haven't seen a new consistent model replace it as quickly as everyone expected. How do you think companies should approach performance management in the future? I think, I mean, we've been thinking about this a lot um, for a long time as well. We were one of the organizations that really put forward the idea of, of getting rid of ratings. In fact, we published a piece that became one of the biggest ever for Strategy and Business Magazine, which was called Kill Your Performance Ratings. Um, still makes the rounds and it explains the really the, the underpinning neuroscience of why they might feel good to have ratings, but they do more harm that's yeah. invisible that they do good. So, um, and, and you know, the people are catching on to that more and more, that the normal rating. So there's been a huge move to more, what you'd call more continuous performance management. Um, I mean, ultimately the really big skill that I think all people managers need is uh, firstly, uh, defining what great looks like um, so that people have more certainty and more autonomy. Yeah. Um, and then you also have a shared goal with relatedness, right? Um, so defining what great looks like as opposed to like monitoring activity. So on the one hand, there's like managers monitoring activity. On the other hand, there's like, we're going to show you what great really looks like so you can self-manage towards it. Um, and then we can, then, then it's not so much about 40 hours. It's about, uh, you know, are you producing great work? Um, so I think there's a real lack in defining what great looks like. Um, then there's a real issue obviously around feedback. Our research shows that asking for feedback um, should be the driver, not giving feedback. So we want to teach people to ask, uh, because when a manager asks, you know, a peer for feedback, the peer asks back. If a manager asks one of their team for feedback, it creates tremendous trust. Then the team member asks them. And our research shows it roughly halves the stress level for all parties, the person asking and receiving. We published several papers on this. So asking for feedback drops the stress for both sides about half. Um, in the study that we did, which makes makes it easier to receive, but also you know you're more likely to give more more accurate, honest feedback. Um, so there's a whole kind of different model around feedback, which should be driven by an asking culture. Yeah. Um, and th those and, and then the third thing I think is you know really important is having a growth mindset, um, and um, is, is is really helping people get better rather than just you know pushing people to try to look good. Um, is, is how can we continually help this person improve and focus on progress? Um, so those are some of the things I think are really central to uh, you know a new way of thinking about performance management is is you know less management, more you know clarity about excellence, um, and, you know less giving feedback, more asking for feedback, and really generating insight through that, um, and less trying to you know follow up and, and, and assess people, and more looking at what's next and developing people. So we think those three things are, are super important in uh, the next generation of, of performance cultures. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.